to Tucson Church International. We are so happy you've decided to join us in gathering today. For our first time guests, we are so excited you're here and we've been anticipating you. By connecting with us through the link that you can find in the online chat, you will find we've already prepared a gift for you. We're so excited to connect with you more. Each week, we love to celebrate our dream team that brings a better community of all of us together. We thank them for their service every week to bring an amazing church back to life. Can you do me a favor? Let's get rid of all distractions because we want to focus on God. Please invite your friends and family and let us worship together. We just invite you into worship with us and lift up our glorious God. He's amazing. Listen. I was every beneath my shame and who could carry that kind of way it was mine too till I met and I was breathing but not
tracking with us um, again we're in the middle of a series here uh, that's entitled help been suffering in silence our primary text we've been hanging out in John chapter 10 uh, it's where Jesus talks and he says 10 10 he says the thief comes um, only to steal to kill and destroy man if you missed last weekend we unpacked this at another level over mothers it was amazing i'd never seen it in this way never seen the text like that i've never done a mother's day message like we did last week but uh if you missed it just make sure you follow up on it it'll bless your life i believe and uh but the in uh the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy but jesus says i've come yeah that you might have life right yeah in this life that is the life-giving spirit of christ and have it to the fullest yeah, or one translation would say, have it more abundantly, right? And, uh, and so again, we've been uh, addressing this subject of help. People are, again, suffering in silence. Um, we are acknowledging Mental Health Awareness Month, and, um, and we've been hitting several subjects. So far, really, we, we, we got a few more to come to, and I'm excited about it um, in terms of the impact, but we have covered anxiety We've talked about anxiety, and then we, we had a full session on depression. And, um, and then last week we did Mother's Day one weekend, and there we had the um, hosting his presence weekend. So we didn't do a full teaching, but this is really the kind of fourth installment tonight. Um, and last weekend, Mother's Day weekend, we still were under the theme in the overarching focus of this um, theme that we're in, help suffering in silence. I'm not gonna give any commentary on the previous teachings. Uh, I wanna dive right into it for tonight and we'll see how far we go. Um, so grateful again to those of you that are viewing us online. So grateful for your diligence and your commitment to be with us. For the next few minutes, I wanna talk about the subject matter of worry. I want to talk for a few moments about worrying and the subject matter of worry. From the studies, Aaron, it shows that worry is one of these elements um, that we contend with, that we are challenged with or by, that if not careful, particularly here in the West, it really is one of those things that is um, um, overlooked um, or it's ignored, right? Why do I say that? Because we live in a society and a culture where it is just normal. God, I wish I had help. It's kind of normal to worry, right? And so we don't really see it as mental health challenge or maybe something that's too... Uh, far out there, we all worry a little bit. It's kind of part of who we are, and it's part of our culture. Um, Barna says that 60% uh, of adults here in the United States struggle with worry and stress daily, every day. So looking even in this audience is over half of the folks right now that are worried in this room. Over half of you are worried in this room and you can't even fully or completely concentrate. Even while you're in this setting, you're struggling to stay connected to what I'm saying. Just some of you, some of you, according to these studies here, maybe more than half are struggling. You're here, and we thank God for it. You're present. But if we were able to do a scan, God help me tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm teaching, and you're thinking about next week. I'm talking right now, and you got all kinds of stuff running through your head 
that is undone or that you need to get to. Am I talking to anybody here? Yeah, yeah. you're like, I made it in the house. I ain't fully here, but I'm here. Praise God. Amen. If you got anybody close to you, just look at them, nudge them and tell them, say, are you here? Are you here? Yeah, yeah. I need you to be here. I need you to be here. I need you to be here. Yeah, I need you to be here. Yeah. So sometime we are here and, uh, and we are navigating. Sometime we are here, but we're not present. And our minds are in many different areas. It's called drifting. Yeah, it's called drifting. And, uh, and we're all guilty of it and, you know, vulnerable to it, I should say. And, um, yeah. And it's interesting because we are, according to the scripture, born in sin. Right? shaping in iniquity right now we that are no christ have been born again and we have a new nature but the vast majority of us have been living under the old nature longer than the new nature so the old nature is more dominant than the new nature god am i talking here so our default Please jot this down. Our default, because of that old nature, watch this, whenever anything's going on, our natural default is fear. God help me. The natural default is fear. It's not faith. Oh, my. Yeah. The, 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 my, natural, my natural inclination, um, even though I'm born again and I'm exercising my faith muscle, it's not all the way there yet. So I'm not usually going there first. Most times, if we, you and I are worried or if we're up at night, most times, not all, some are intercessors, some of you pray, but most of us, when you're up, you're usually not thinking and processing in faith. You usually got up because there was something that was lingering on your mind. There was something that you were troubled about. There was this thing of worry and you could not rest or sleep. And, you know, you, you're growing and I'm growing. And eventually we start praying. <laughs> Are y'all still with me, right? Yeah, eventually we kind of lean into prayer. And, uh, yeah, usually about that time when you're about to fall over and go back to sleep. But uh, we've set up, looking at the, at the ceiling, set up, processing, navigating, because it's part of the natural inclination. Yeah, we have not fully developed that faith muscle that when something comes up immediately, I go to faith. I trust. I believe God. I speak his word. I, I'm still working on that. My natural inclination is to think the worst and to be gripped by fear and the unknown and uncertainty of life. It's because of this sinful nature that we have. And some of you may be, uh, you know, been tracking with me and tracking with the teaching and you're thinking, well, you kind of already unpacked anxiety, right? And, uh, and they're close twins, right? But there are some distinctions. So there are some close overlapping when it comes to anxiety and worry. Um, Generally, with the worry component, it, it seems to um, set up in our mind. Yeah, that worry component seems to be more tied to our mind. You know what I mean? And, uh, and we've talked more about anxiety, and I've given you my own personal struggle, but anxiety, anxiety almost encompasses the whole body. Are you with me? If you have anxiety, it impacts every part of you. That, that worry seems to kind of sit on your mind, in your thought process. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, the, the worry is usually something that is direct or specific, like you're, you're worried about. You know, anxiety can kind of be encompassed the whole thing. Like I'm just, I got anxiety about whatever and this and that. That, that worry seems to be more specific about what, what, what's coming or what's being presented to you. Okay. <clears throat> so for the next few moments again, just this idea of worry. 
Uh, can I just real quick survey? Anybody in the room ever worried? Mm, all right. Okay. All right. I just, I just wanted to make sure I was in the, okay, I got some folk in the back still got their hands up. <laughs> they like, if you had any question or any doubt uh, about it, I want you to know that, yeah, that's me. I, yeah, I, I just want to make sure I'm in the right room. And um, so let's go here for a few moments and just look at this from the word of God, which is our source. Yes, Jesus talks about this. Yes. Yeah. And if you're here tonight, I want you to know you're in the right place at the right time. I'm so glad that you came. I'm glad that you're here. And I believe that God has a specific word for you. And he has a specific word for me. And those of you that are viewing, it's going to be a specific word for us tonight and no matter what you're navigating, whatever you're processing, you showed up. And we thank God for that. And the Holy Spirit wants to identify this area of worry that we're all contending with. We all deal with it. And yet Jesus teaches his followers, his disciples. He says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 he says therefore I tell you do not worry isn't that something yeah he says do not worry then he goes on he says don't worry about your life don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink don't worry about your body or, or what you're going to wear he goes into all of these he lays it out let me go very quickly back up to verse 24 because verse 25 says therefore right <laughs> so anytime there's the therefore, then you got to go back up, right? Yeah, so just real quick, we're not going to hang out there, but just that, that, that next verse, uh, or verse 24, he was talking in context. Jesus is saying, you cannot serve both God and money, right? So he's in this, in, in this teaching, he's talking and communicating, and he says, you can't serve both. Like, you got to make a decision. Like, don't, don't be caught up. You can't serve God and the money. So the idea here is that, like, don't be so caught up. Don't be so consumed and preoccupied. He starts off and says, don't worry about your finance. Now, y'all just stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. We're going to play on words here. But he says, do not worry about. He didn't say not be concerned about. All right. Okay. Got y'all here. Okay. All right. All right. Just, I couldn't hold it. I just had to give it to you. Y'all was pulling it on me. Like, what you saying? Pull it on me. I felt you. I was like, oh God, I can't hold it. I can't hold it. Oh, Jesus. Woo. Yeah. So there's a difference. You can be worried, but, or concern difference. So, so he says, don't worry about finances. Don't worry about that. Um, and then he says, goes down. He says, don't worry about food. Yeah, don't worry about don't worry about what you're gonna eat. Now he's talking to a crowd who, you know, many of those folks there contextually like didn't know like maybe where the next meal's coming. You know, you and I do worry, but it's usually not where the next meal's coming. It's just like, what am I gonna eat? Right. right? We worry about it so much, we fight over it, and you know, where am I gonna eat and where you wanna eat? And then we get back and forth. Well, I thought you had we had that last night. Well, we went there the last time. Isn't that amazing? He said, don't worry about it, but yet we really get caught up with it where we're going to eat. That's, that's about the extent of our worry in most cases. Sometimes there, you know, there may be some that are struggling. And, but, but contextually, there's probably really like, really like, where are you going to get your food? So he speaks to this crowd and he tells them, you know, don't worry about the finance. Don't, don't, don't worry about food. He says, don't even worry about your body. You know, yeah, don't worry about your body. So he says, don't be obsessed with that. You know, just, just know that I got you. Like, doesn't mean don't be concerned about it, but just don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. And he says, watch this. He says, now, don't, and, and, and don't get caught up. Don't get caught up on your wardrobe. Hmm? This is what the text says. Jesus says, don't you be caught up now on what you're going to wear. Don't be caught up on what you have, what you don't have. Don't be caught up about the big event. Right? Don't be caught up about the likes and the dislikes or what people are going to say and how they're going to, oh, ooh, you know. And about how you're going to move the room and all that. You know, he said, don't be caught up with that. Don't get caught up with that. Don't worry about what you're going to put on. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, don't worry about what you're going to put on. I want to just submit this to us very quickly. Just um, maybe if we, um, maybe if we spent the time thinking about God as much as we do thinking about food. And as much as we do thinking about what we got to wear. Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all. Talk back to me. Don't leave me out here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, everybody in this room is sharp. All y'all sharp. Everybody in this room sharp. So y'all, you know what I mean? You didn't just throw it in. You just, you give some thought to it. Some of y'all be planning these outfits out and everything got to be coordinated and got to be just so and got to be right. Got to go through all of this. And, and then, I mean, like really get perturbed if it doesn't work out. Get a full attitude. Something happened, break your heel. You just did messed up for the day. You hear what I'm saying? Hair out of place, it don't flow, jewelry didn't go right, whatever it is. Jesus said, don't worry about all that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, and, and if I just think about all of it together combined, if, if all the time that I spend just thinking about, okay, I got to get this, I got to get that, and how's this going to flow, and how's that going to flow, you compare that to the time you spend in his presence. If some of us would just shift that, it would, it would literally shift the trajectory of my life. If I would just, I don't know who this is for, if you'll take your clothes preparing time, and shift it to seeking God, your life could change. Good God Almighty. Woo. He didn't say don't be concerned about it, but don't be worried about it to the point that we're obsessed with it and we're overwhelmed by it and we're late getting where we need to get to and we come with an attitude and we're frustrated because it didn't work out. Be grateful that you got something to put on. Be grateful that God has provided for us. Okay. And then he goes on this last part. It's all amazing. This last part, he says, he says in verse uh, 34, Matthew 6, he says, uh, therefore, again, do not worry about tomorrow. He said, so for, he said, because then tomorrow will worry about itself. It has its own issues. So in other words, he says, again, beloved, don't, don't get caught up with finance. Don't be worried about your food and what you're going to eat. Don't be worried all about what's going on with the body. Don't be worried about what you're going to wear, your fashion, all of that. Then he says, don't even worry about what's happening in the future. God, I wish I had help here. This is a rhema for somebody here tonight. This is a rhema for somebody here tonight. And I believe even as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit is healing. Because there again, some of you that have come here tonight and you are, you are, you are engaged with a, uh, the worry of what's coming and it's still challenging to fully sit in this moment. And so I believe as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit is touching. Do you hear me? I believe as I'm talking tonight. And just serving that Holy Spirit is bringing some of you in. And for some of you, this amount of time is the most you've been able to focus. And you're having an intentional effort right now. That God, I want to stay right here. I want to hear what pastor's saying. I want to stay right here. I want to stay right here. Mm -hmm. I want to stay right here. Yep, that bill keep popping up in your head. Or just that circumstance popping up in your head. And what you got to get done is popping up in your head. But I believe healing is going to happen. And so he says, don't even get caught up about what's happening tomorrow. Don't worry about what's going on down the road. He didn't say don't be concerned. We're going to come to that in a moment. But says do not allow yourself to worry. Don't be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to go on next week, what's going to happen in a year from now. Lord, where am I going to be? I don't know what's going to take place here. I don't know this might happen and, oh, that might take place. And I don't know what's going to, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so far down there, I can't be here. So worried about what might happen. So it says, don't be preoccupied with your future plans, right? Don't be so preoccupied about where you're going to be. Yeah, yeah, we serve a God who has the ability to give me my daily bread. God, I feel him in this room. God, I feel it. Yeah, he has the ability if I'll go after him, he'll give me what I need today. 
Yeah, that was wrong with the children of Israel. God was providing for them, Lamont. He was providing that manna. And they just, they wanted more. They wanted more. Then they wanted to store it up because they were thinking, what's going to happen tomorrow? And everything they, could, God Almighty, everything they stored up, it spoiled. It wasn't about storing up. It was about trusting God for the daily need and the daily manna of God to come. Don't store it up. So he says, don't, don't get preoccupied with where you're going. Don't be preoccupied with what's coming and how this is going to unfold. So he doesn't just, Jesus is so wonderful. that He doesn't just say, you know, don't worry, don't worry. But he gives us a clear picture and he shows us in the text how not to do it. He says in verse 26, he says, look at the birds of the air. He said, they do not sow or reap. There again, they don't store away in barns. Yeah. And he says, yet your heavenly father feeds them. And here's the real word for somebody in the room tonight. He says, and I, I felt this when I was in prayer today. He says, are you not much more valuable than they? And that is a word for you that are viewing. That's a word for somebody in this room tonight. Yeah. And I mean that with a, not a Christianese response, not a religious response, not a, oh, amen, praise God. No, do you really believe that you are much more valuable to God than the birds of the air? God says to you, I love you way more than I love the birds. And yet they don't have to go store and move and go. He said, and I take care of them. How much more do you think he says to us that he's going to take care of us? Mm -hmm. So I want it to sink in and I want us to embrace that. Do I really believe that? So when I am consumed with worry... Am I really believing that God cares more for me than he does the birds of the air? So he says to you and I, and that's our message tonight, is he says, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't allow your life to be consumed with worry. There's a real difference. Let me say this, and then we'll wrap up. There's a difference, again, between concern. Don't miss that. So this idea from the text that we just don't worry doesn't mean like, oh, just, you know, you know don't, you know, just, you know, don't worry, just be happy. No, no, no. It's not just don't worry. That means, you know, inactive. It means don't worry, just sit down and hope something will happen. It's not don't worry, just being wishful thinking. Don't worry. It means that you're inactive. Don't worry. God's going to work it out. So I'm going to sit here and watch him work it out. That's not what he's saying. Hmm. So there are concerns. The idea of a concern generally puts us in the mode of looking for a solution. God, I wish I had help here tonight. Yeah. When I'm thinking about a concern... It usually evokes this thought process of what can I do about it, right? That's going to bring some solution to whatever it is that I have a concern about. Father's all about that. Like, that's good. That's a good thing for you and I to be concerned. So we should be concerned about our food and concerned about how well we take care of our bodies. And we should be concerned about these things. We just should not worry about them. If we are concerned, usually the concern will provoke or evoke this uh, movement. Mm. Mm. So if, if, I'm, if, if, if I'm struggling, if I have a concern about my health, right, then it will give me this solution, this strategy, this plan for me to enact some things that will relieve my concern. Mm. If you're concerned that your relationship is eroding, right? 
yeah, it, the, the goal is not just, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? God going to fix it. No, no. The, the, the goal is you shouldn't worry about it. But if you're concerned about it, then you're going to seek help to get you out of that state that you're in. So still tracking? If, if you have concern about your finances, right, then you're going to come up with a plan and a strategy to address that. You're not just going to sit back and say, well, I just hope God will work it out. You, you're going to figure out where, where, where the hole is, where the drain is, why are you losing over here, why this is going, you know, whatever it is you got to do. And you sit with a financial person and you receive help and instruction. So what I'm suggesting to us is that when we are concerned about something, it usually will provoke and promote some type of action. We got to get something in movement. We got we to gotta go somewhere. We got to do something. We got to change something. We got to shift something. I have a concern and so it will push me and move me into action mm. 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 are you still tracking so this concern is a good thing you, you should have concerns and it'll birth some kind of movement on the inside of us now the difference is is when you worry you and I are worrying about things that, watch this, are out of our control. God, I wish I had help here. Yeah, you, you, you're worrying about stuff that you and I can't do anything about. You, you're worrying about what could happen tomorrow, and you're not in tomorrow yet, and you have no control over tomorrow. And instead of it putting you into an action mode, you become paralyzed. So, yeah, so we, you see the difference? So, there's nothing wrong with having a healthy concern about a situation, and we respond to that concern. We come up with a strategy and a plan, but worry is a whole nother animal. That's, that's, that's a whole nother day. And Jesus said, I don't want you doing that. Yeah, be concerned about what's going on. Come up with a plan. Get a strategy. Work it. Make it happen. But, but that worry, he says, stay away from that. Yeah, that worry is going to paralyze you, and not only will it paralyze you, but it damages your mental health. God, I wish I had help in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're worrying, even though it seems natural to us in America to be worried about whatever is going on, it's eating away on the inside of us, causing us not to have any movement. We become inactive, and at the same time, it's messing with my mental health. It's messing with my physical body because worry is nothing for you and I to be playing with. Jesus says, as my followers, I don't want you to be worried. Be concerned, but don't be preoccupied with stuff that you can't do anything about. You can't change it. You can't shift it. You can't make it happen. Yeah, you can't do anything about that. Ooh, my God, you, you can't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. So when we, yeah, that's why he says, Jesus says there in verse 27, almost through, we're going to pray in verse 27. He says, can any one of you... <laughs> By worrying at a single hour to your life. Right? He says, can any one of us add? No, we can't add. But I tell you, you worry long enough, you can subtract. You can't add anything by worrying, but you sure can subtract. Yeah, it'll eat away at you. It'll take some stuff from you. Even though you can't add to whatever the circumstance or the situation is, you can't add to your life. But if you worry long enough, it'll take from your life. Don't you be deceived. It's going to take from your life. And I believe we're addressing this as a people and as a nation because, again, it's very common for us. And that's why it can go undetected. It's common for everybody. You can say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm worried about that. I'm worried. I'm yeah, no. It's, you know, he said, I don't want you as my followers to be worried. I do want you to be concerned, but, but don't be worried. Don't sit up all night being preoccupied with something you can't do anything about. And so you can't change it, and yet it just shifted you on the inside, and you lost a night. You've lost a night. You've lost time. You've lost effort. You've lost energy. 
right? Twiddling your thumbs, going over it, rehearsing it over and over in your head, can't sleep, tossing and turning, stuff's going on, ulcers in your stomach, all kinds of things that are occurring, but you can't do anything about it. And we get through all of that and we still find ourselves at whatever that destination is. Right? The very thing I'm worried about, trying to figure it out, staying up all night, I can't do anything about it. And whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen the next day. Okay. Okay, let me get to the root of it. Please jot it down. Just catch some of these and then we're going to pray. So, so really the idea here, beloved, is that when we are worried, when we're in this place and state where we're just, you know, consumed, right, trying to figure it out. Oh, when I find myself in that state, at the root of it, please jot it down, is a lack of trust. Yeah, when I'm, when I'm consumed with this at the level that I am with worry, it denotes to me that I, I'm at the root of it, I'm really not trusting God. Right? And, and please hear me, and God can handle that, okay? Don't, don't feel, you know, he, he's okay with it. He just don't want us to stay there. He's like, that's not what I, what I died for. It's not what I resurrected for. You know what I mean? It's not the life that I really want you to, to live, though I can handle you being in that state. You know, God don't push us back because we worry, right? He still loves us no matter if we worry, whatever the deal, you eating your fingernails, just whatever it is. He just, God loves you through it, right? Whatever your, your thing is, he's just, he'll, 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 he'll love you through that. Don't, don't think he's going to push you away, but he's trying to provide for us a better way. That's what he's saying. This is, remember that whole deal, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and then have that life more abundantly. This abundant life is a life that does not fill with worry, right? It's a life that, that is concerned when concern is necessary, but it's not worry. I don't want to be worried. Worry leads to all kinds of things. Yeah, it leads to all kinds of things. But at the root of it for me, I'm discovering I don't fully trust God, right? And sometimes it's hard to hear it, hard to face it, but it's true. It's either I'm trusting or I'm not. Like, I'm trusting God, but I'm going to stay up all night. Right? And so he clearly tells us that he neither sleeps nor slumbers. God says, I don't sleep. And I'll give my beloved sweet sleep. Yeah, he said, the people that are connected and follow me, if you'll trust me, I'll let your sleep be blessed. It makes no sense, God says, for me to be up and you. Like, why are you still up? I'm the one up. I don't sleep nor slumber. And you up trying to work it out. And I'm the one that's already worked it out. So I'm not going to sleep, so you might as well sleep. I'm up so you can sleep. So it just comes this idea of possibly not trusting God fully or not really trusting the plan. Yeah, not really trusting God's process. So I become concerned and worried and then I get into myself and to what I want and how I want it. Right? Yeah, and so it's like, God, I'm not really trusting your plan. I'm, I'm, I'm worried because it's indicating to me that I really don't trust and believe that God's with me. That's why I shared earlier that, that text when he talked about the birds of the air and he's like, I love you more and greater than them. Like, do we really believe that? So when I'm in the midst of that worry, and that's a real thing, beloved. This is what we're talking about. And none of us have arrived. I'm not there. I still find myself in that place. I'm still struggling. I'm still challenged. I, stuff show up, stuff come up. It still hits, you know. Yeah, things when I'm thinking I'm good and I've overcome it, and all of a sudden something will come up and get right in the pit of my stomach. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, just, just, and that thing come back up again. I thought, God, I thought I was good. You know what I mean? Whatever it could be, just whatever the situation. So I, I just want you to know again, again, I'm not going to get into most major testimonies, but every time I speak as it relates to this subject matter, I'm telling you every week, I'm not preaching at you or just telling you we're all in this together. I've not arrived. We're still pulling on this word. Some days are better than others, stronger than others, right? But we're all learning it together and saying, God, we can make a decision tonight that, man, I don't have to live that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to get that little thing in the pit of my stomach. I don't have to be overly concerned. 
something pops up and you see it and it's there, you get this call or a teller, oh, God, what is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's okay. And God walks me through it. But there's moments I'm saying, okay, God, I wasn't really trusting you then. You know? And um, a couple of years ago, I had some testing and things were being done. I had to get my full work up and all that kind of stuff happening and had a little bit of this and a little that and nothing crazy, but it was enough to stir me. You know what I mean? And so I'm going in and Jess, I'm in this deal and, and I'm going back to the doctor to get some things checked out. And, and, um, uh, and so when I go back to get my results, <laughs> I come into the office, um, Arlene, they put me in where they do the biopsies. Maurice, I don't even know if I tell you. They, they put me in this room. It was not on purpose. Don't you say that, Robert. It wasn't on purpose. But I wondered if it was on purpose. So I'm sitting in there, and I'm thinking, what, you know, nurse brings me in. She said, oh, yeah, and just hit the doctor be with you. The longest wait I've ever had. Took him probably 40 minutes. He's never been that late, never been that long. I'm sitting in this room thinking, okay, this is it, doc. He brought me in because he got to tell me what's happening, and this is going to be my fate. I got to get this box. I'm going, all this is running through my head. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, oh, God, what's going to happen? 40 minutes. He comes in, you know, like, thumbs up, man. He told me, go drink a Coke. I said, doc, I appreciate you. I ain't drinking no Coke. Yeah, I ain't going to do that. I ain't drinking no Coke. I ain't doing that. He said, you're great. Numbers are fine, everything. I said, why did they bring me in this? He said, we were just packed. He just told the nurse, she said, I'm so sorry, Mr. Miles. She said, we just, all the rooms were full. And this was the only one that was open. I had never been in a biopsy room before. And here I'm coming thinking that that might be the next step. We'd had this discussion that we're going to do this first, and if not, we may have to do this. By so I'm thinking he's preparing me to let me know what's going on. And all this is going through my head while he's just seeing other patients. And he said, I'm so sorry I was so late coming in. He said, man, you're wonderful. Numbers are great. Go out and have a Coke. On. Just do what you want to do. Everything's good. And I'm just sitting here. I'm telling you, it's the worry. All the stuff that's coming in our head. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do anything about it. Whatever area, beloved, that I'm really caught up in worrying, it reveals the area that I really don't trust God in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tonight, as we get ready, we're going to wrap up in just a moment. But just before we, before we begin to pray, what, what is it for you? What is the thing that you're worrying about? Is it relationship? Is it health concerns or financial or personal? Or what is it for you? So Jesus says this to us, and I need you to catch this part because in case I don't get to come back to it. So he didn't just tell us, like, don't worry, don't worry. That's what I love about him. Then he gives us this example of the birds, and, and then he wraps this whole thing up, and he says, you want to know how we avoid that? How do we move from that place? It's not just automatic. He said, the reason and the way that you will not worry is if you seek me first. Please jot that down. We're almost going. Yeah, it's all right there in the text, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah, and his righteousness and all these other things. He said, they'll be given to you. They'll be added to you. So what does it mean? He's like, the, you know, the, the way to do this is to seek the kingdom first. Right? It means you pursue him. He says, so our responsibility, beloved, our job is to put God first in our lives. So that's really the real question. Is he first? Like, for real, for real, is he first? So let's just go through it quickly. Is God really first in your day? Whatever area that you're looking at, is he first? Is God first in your relationships? Hmm? Are you trying to do your relationship based on your own experience? Hmm? Yeah. So are you seeking God first? Right? Are the rela whatever the relationships are, just whatever they are, are we, are we seeking God for those relationships? Is he, is he at the center of those relationships? Or, or am I just doing on what I, going on what I think and what I know and what my experience? I don't even need to talk to God about this. I got it. Yeah. 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 The people you work with, your, your employees, your all of it. Like, are you really seeking God first? 
Are you going on your degree and your certificate and all the stuff you've done and all your experience? Or are you daily asking God for wisdom and insight as you interact with your employees and the people that are connected to you and the folks that are on your team and the folks that you are leading and whatever it is? Are you just going on your own intellect and your own ability? Are we really seeking God or your own business? Or when you walk into that place, Robert, are you asking God to show you what needs to happen at that appointment and happen at that, ha at that house or happen at that business? Are you asking God and seeking him for what needs to happen are we relying on what we've always done is your relationships being founded on God mm. is he the first place in your mind in your thinking or are we in a place where our minds are drifting mm. I'll give this to you beloved give it to you for free mm. can I say this to you but what we're worried about just so that you may give thought to this. Please jot it down. It may not occur. Aaron said that part, that part. Can I submit to us that what we are worried about, it may never happen. It may not occur. So what I'm worried about right now that's consuming all of my time and my energy, I gave you my little story, and there's multiple more there. I'm just the one that came to my mind. Mm, I'm sitting there worried, 45 minutes almost. Is this going to happen? Never came to pass, but it took time out. You best believe those 30, 40 minutes I was consumed because it just didn't make natural sense to me. Like, why well, you didn't put me in a regular room? <laughs> there's got to be something to this. Mm. Yeah, and those are real deals, beloved. I'm trying to tell you, and and, and, I, and I'm not making light of the scenario. I thank God that He came in and gave me a thumbs up. There are other people that's not always the case, so I'm not making light of that. Those are real deals, and you you can't just try to suppress that or act like it's not there. That's why I'm trying to tell you, this is all real. You're in the midst of storm and circumstance. Those things are real. Those emotions are real. What we feel are real. You know, and God's not cutting us off because we had those moments. He's just trying to show us all, I got a better way for you. Can I submit to us that, you know what, what you're worried about, it may happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the other side of this. This whole, you know, let's just, we're just going to pray it away. We're going to believe God. We're gonna believe. Yeah, we do. And we do stand in faith. We do believe God. But then sometimes it happens. Mm hmm yeah, sometimes it happens. Very thing that you're thinking about, wondering if it's going to happen, and well, I wonder how this is going to turn out, and I wonder what's this going to be here, and is this going to be another shift? Am I going to have to transition? Is this going to be another deal? Is this going to have to, you know, am I going to have to close this off or cut this off, or is this going to shift? Is it going to change? What my life going to be like on the other side? And sometimes when you're concerned and thinking about that, or really not necessarily concerned, but you become worried with it, there, there are times, let me just be frank and tell you, because so that way you're not surprised. Sometimes the stuff you were thinking that, well, what could be if this happened? You'll be there. It ain't no longer a thought. You're living in it. It's a reality now. I hope that's not too much for you. I'm just telling you there is stuff that you and I can believe and think through, but I wonder what this would be like. If this happened, if that, if that goes this way, who? Well, sometimes it goes that way, and you're there. And you have to live in that reality. So sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you stood and believed and prayed and watched, and then it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. Sometimes you don't get the job. Sometimes you prepare and prepare and prepare, and you don't get the promotion. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you think it should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You worked hard to try to get that house, and it fell through. Mm -hmm. And you posted and told everybody you were walking by faith, and now you got to go back and... Yeah. You ever been there where you posted something, and you had to go back... Ooh. I've seen stuff. This, this content is no longer here. You ever been there? Y'all ever been there? Yeah. yeah, it's been removed. This content is no longer here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just being really truthful with this, beloved, because I think sometimes we get caught up in this and we think nothing ever happens. We do. Yeah. We think life just doesn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it does happen. Sometimes it didn't go the way that you thought it was going to go. Can I say this to you? The things that you're really worried about and sitting up thinking through, it may happen. But I can tell you this one thing. 
God's going to grace you through it. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to grace you through it. It don't always stop. It doesn't always change. It doesn't always go a different course. He just said, but I got you. And I'm going to grace you through it. Whichever way, whichever way it turns, whatever way it goes, he said, I got you. I got you in the palm of my hand. Yes, that's what he says. I, I got you. It may not change, but, but you must, you must, or it may change, but you recognize I will never change. And I'm going to always be with you. I'm, I'm with you in the storms of life. I'm with you when it's pouring and it's raining. And I'm with you in the sunlight. I'm, I'm with you when everything is going well. And I'm with you when you got to navigate by faith. And trust me, God says, no matter where I am, no matter where you are, I am with you. I got you. Am I talking to anybody in the house? You may not, it may not change the way you want it. You may have to walk out. You may have to walk off the job. You may have to shift it. It may have to change. But the God who brought you in is the God that's going to keep you and the God that's going to carry you through and the God that's going to bring you out on the other side. He's that kind of God. Can I get four or five of you that would bless him and honor him and give God the glory and give give him the praise. He promised that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. There isn't anything that you and I can go through that God is not with us. He is Emmanuel. I wish I had help here. I said, he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is God in us and he is God through us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Somebody in the room ought to give God some praise and you ought to give God some glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, he is with me. No matter what I have to face, God says, I am with you. Though you go through the flood, he said, I'm with you. Go through the fire. He says, I am with you. Yeah. Says I'm with you. I'm with you. Woo. Glory to God. Take your seat in his presence. I'm done. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now. Let's just honor the presence of the Lord. You that are viewing, just worship him. Honor God right there. Just talking and tackling this subject of worry. All of us are contending with it. But can you for the next minute or so right now just let everything else go? Can you do that, beloved? Just let everything else go and just worship God. Just worship God. Don't worry about your future. Don't worry about how this is going to turn out. Don't worry about your career and how this is going to pan out. And Lord, is this ever going to come to pass? Would you let that peace of God rest in you right now and rest on your heart? I feel this again as a rhema for many in this room. You have many concerns about what's going to happen. And there are some of you in this room and viewing and you have health concerns. I want to encourage you, beloved. I'm not making light of it. I'm just telling you now, would you just trust God? Lean in. Lean in. You can't. You don't have all of the answers. You can't change it or shift it. What you can do is trust him and believe God and lean in at another level. Come on, beloved. Would you worship him? Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're in a financial scenario. I'm telling you, he is Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, he's Jehovah Jireh. He'll take care of you. May not come the way you think it is, but he's going to take care of you. Be concerned, strategize, but you better lift that two-year plan to God. <laughs> you better lift that five-year plan, that vision plan, and I have them, but you better surrender them to God. I need some people in this room to I need some folks to say Lord it's not my will but your will yeah 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 it's not my will but your will I got my plan I got my thought I got my agenda but God tonight I want to surrender it tonight I want to yield it I yield it before you God I yield it I don't know how it's going to turn out but I know you're with me I'm going to trust you in the midst of it you alone you alone you're the name 